beautiful morning in the swan. I was out here about 5.30. I've got a young one, so I've got to get out when I can. I've got my shorter rod set up, the 1 to 3 kilo Veritas, and my 2500 Stratic, and I've got the um, 8 pound Expedition braid. Really good stuff. It casts like 4 pound. I start up using the uh, ZX Vibe. Great lure that you can cast a mile. Here I'll show you my casting technique. Flick it out, then you hold the rod in front of you for about a second before it hits the water. When you hold it out in front, the braid will peel straight out and go through those guides without, I guess, any or less resistance. You will get, you know, an extra one to two, maybe three meters from this. Sounds small, but when you're casting and canvassing, those extra couple of meters will mean more fish. I often get pretty lazy and don't do this the whole way through, I'll, I'll admit that, but you will get a few extra meters. These are pretty simple lures to use and good for a spot like this where there's a little bit of structure and a pretty deep drop off as well. So I usually let it sink, reel in slowly and a few hops. Probably should be doing a few more pauses, but even then, it still works. An important thing to consider when using these types of lures is making sure those assist hooks are nice and sharp. I changed out the ones on this 43 for some BKK assist hooks. Um, the ones that come in the packet are good, but they just don't really last after a good session on the flathead. You know, they've got quite thick heads and um, they're in small hooks so they can blunt up pretty quickly. And especially blowies will sometimes nip off one of the hooks and then sometimes you're only left with one tiny little hook. So checking those assist hooks before you go out in session might mean you're going to catch a few more fish. Not a little bad start to the morning. I kept a few for a really good cook up at the end of this video. Don't you love that little cup from the accidental paws rolling down the sleeves to avoid getting sunburnt? It's fighting pretty funny. Thought it might have been a little yellow tail. Little silver brim. Didn't expect that. With the little assist hooks as well, we just got to get that drag right as well. You want to maintain pressure on them at all times, but not let them rip out the hooks. quite a lot more structure in these spots compared to some of the flat side wave. And here, I'm not holding the camera under the water, I'm literally walking out and the chest mounts underneath, trying to retrieve a lure. So the ZX is caught on some little plant down here somewhere. I've got my little lure satchel above my head. What I forgot is that I've got a backpack on, or cooler backpack, which was slowly filling up with water with the 
flathead that I'd caught in the background. Either way, I didn't want to lose a $25 lure. Got him back. After getting a number of these little tacker flatties, I walked up to uh, another flat spot, which is a I guess the more traditional flats with the sandy bottoms and weed bed. I chucked on the zip bait riggy. Here I'm winding a lot faster than I would for most lures, but I really like the reaction bite with this type of lure. So I'm winding it in and constantly flicking it. it. Means that you can cover a lot of ground a lot quicker. I'm basically yeah, there's a few uh, around. flicking it around as much as I can to make it look like a wounded bait fish. Little snag there, but got him off. Constantly flicking. Nice little hook up. These aren't too bad. I was out here with my mate Jordan. He came down for the second half of the session. He's on YouTube as well. He's uh, Jordan B. Fishing on YouTube and Facebook. He's a really good follower and a gun and tailor fisherman as well. So the classic zip back riggy doing the job here. Another keeper for the cook up later. When handling this fish, uh, try and hold it tight about an inch before its head and you just really want to avoid getting spiked by the two fins on either side of its head or two spikes. It can be pretty painful. It's usually the smaller ones which will get you when they flick around when you're taking the lure off. And then switched over to uh, the Vex Buckaboo, three and a half grams. Beautifully clear water today, so you could see him following the lure in. Awesome sight fishing. Sorry, follow it in, eh? Jordan was on the board again. He was using a uh, little atomic divers and he was doing well. I then got a really nice one on the buckaboo. One where he finally saw me and started racing off. I asked Jordan to give us a hand netting the fish but I accidentally got tangled up all in his line. Another nice keeper for the cook up. Jordan then got on to a really nice one as well. Oh yeah, I see him. He's nice. 
Nice one, mate. All in knee deep yeah. water. I can net him for you if you want. This one was putting a nice bin in the road. Beautiful. High 40s model. That's what you want. After we both had to race off to do kid duties, we decided to make flathead Euros today. The first point of call is to make a tzatziki. This is, I guess, the main part of the recipe. It's just this tzatziki with some fish and chips is bloody awesome. So I start off by grating two Lebanese cucumbers on the fine grate. I'll then chuck that into a colander, add a little bit of salt on it to allow um, a little bit of the moisture to come out. I'll let that sit for about five minutes. I'll then get a 500 grams or um, I guess two cups of Greek yogurt and I'll add a handful of dill. I add a little bit now and then might add a bit more later depending on how it looks. It's a lot harder to take it out if you put in too much. And then grate two to three cloves of garlic. I went to today because I'm going to use a lot of this tzatziki later in the week and that garlic will really infuse over the week. If you're going to plan to eat it all in that day, three cloves will be fine. Then probably the juice of uh, maybe a third of a lemon or half a lemon. So after straining out the uh, cucumber juice, I'll tip that out and then let it sit for a few more minutes and get the final little bits out. I'll then mix that all together with the rest, add in some salt and pepper and some good quality olive oil. I actually usually just pull that straight back into the, the tub and let it sit in the fridge for a while. So for the pitta, I've just got two cups of plain flour, then I've got one and a half cups of warm water, which I add a packet of yeast to, and then just one teaspoon of salt, one of sugar, that simple. I'll mix it around in the hand for about 10 minutes, adding a little bit of flour if it needs. Put a little bit of olive oil on it and then let it sit in the cupboard for about 40 minutes. I'll then take the ribs and dough, push out a little bit of the air and divide it up into four pieces or more, depending on how big your pita you want. In Greece, I always had my euros with uh, chips, so just chopping up a potato, letting it soak in some water and then I'll put some spices on it and chuck it in the air fryer just before everything's ready. After the dough sit for about another 10-15 minutes, I'll roll it out and chuck it on the pan. Just tiny little bit of olive oil underneath and I'm just using the lid of the pan just to allow a little bit of steam to make it a little bit more puffy. You don't have to do this. Then I'm just constantly turning it. While I'm cooking the pitta, I've got the fish on. The fish only takes about a minute or so, a uh, minute each side. I've just rolled it in flour, salt, pepper and oregano. one of those dishes you want to eat really hot so once the bread's nice and cooked I'll let it sit for a minute or so then I'll chuck on some tzatziki thinly cut red onion bit of tomato and pile on that fish so again the fish is just dusted in flour oregano salt and pepper and then a handful of those crispy chips Roll it up and ready to eat. Don't hold back on tzatziki as well. I also made the wife a chicken version as well. She won't eat the river fish like usual. Thanks for watching. For more uh, Flathead, Perth Metro, and Catch and Cook, please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section.